Hello my friends, welcome to another exciting episode in our flyer design series. In this video, I'll be walking you through the process of creating a flyer like this in Photoshop. So sit back, relax, or get your PCs ready and let's do this together. If you've not subscribed to my channel, you can be hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification so you miss any videos I'll be dropping anytime soon. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is go over to File, click on New, and um, Width and Height 55, Resolution 300, and click on Create. Then you're greeted with this nice looking interface, and everything is intact. The first thing you want to do is click on Solid Color. That's the first thing we're going to set first. And I'm just going to select this color here like this. Uh, I might decide to change it later, but for now, I'm just going to settle with this. Great. Um, okay. So, um, I'm going back to my resource file again. The resource file is in the link. Description link below this video is in the description of this video, I meant to say. So, just do well to click on it and um, make use of it. So I'm going to place this image here like this. Right. So what we want to do is get rid of the edges that's the top and the bottom so with my brush selected make sure your foreground color is set to black like this and my flow is set to 100 right and i'm just going to erase this part here like this make sure you're working on the mask very important so i'm just going to change this blend mode to overlay like this you can see how much difference that makes great next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to increase it like this ctrl t and increase it and um, i just decided to make another copy of this to make it more intense but with this i'm just going to reduce the opacity a bit like this yeah good this way okay so six all right great So select the two of them and I'm going to group them, Ctrl G to group and I'm just going to tone down the opacity for all of them. I might come back to this later on to increase it, depending on how the design goes, right? I'm just going to name it BG1. Okay, now that that's out of the way, so let's move forward then. So I'm just going over to my text tool using the horizontal, the first one, and I'm just going to type something here quick. Right, so just type the word is love and um, country, uh, bring it to the middle, change the color, click on color and um, just make this white like this and click OK. So I'm just going to go over to extra bold, this is what I want to use, right? And I'm just going to change the font here. Or better still, you can always do that manually by pressing Ctrl T. I'm going to use this instead. Then, of course, I don't like too many spaces in between my text. I'm going to use minus 50 for this. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up here like this. Ctrl J. Oh, before I do that, let me increase the size. Ctrl T and increase the size this way. Right, great. So I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this. Right. So you know the drill, right? So press Ctrl J. To duplicate it like this and uh, i need one more let's go ctrl j again good i'm just going to bring this down so we have three like this so i'm coming to this part hold shift select select three of them and um move them up with the arrow key then after that i'm just going to group everything so every element in my design is properly arranged into sections that i want right so um position it here right before i group everything um i'm going over to my text too. i'm going to type something else so the word is spread but the spread isn't going to be this big and i'm not going to use this font so first things first reduce the size of the spread like this good 
and the next thing you want to do is change the typeface right so I'm going to use another typeface and then um, this will be the nice candidate for this I'm going to use this but then the words are too clumped together so I just want to separate them I'm going to use minus hundred and no not minus hundred plus hundred sorry good so this is what I would use for this okie dokie so then I'm going back to the background double click on the thumbnail I want to reduce it a bit that's too much So for this you can either use my settings or use your discretion make sure the background is not light at this point right so i'm going to group all of this but before then i'm going to create a new layer on top of this place beneath the first love so let me just select all the love and then i'm going to group them like this and i'm going to give it love text so it's going to be love text okay great so um let me increase this you can see why it's very very important for you to group things and for your layers to be arranged properly so when you want to make adjustments you just know exactly where to click, click and um, make those adjustments okay so working on this layer we created before this new layer here so what i want to do is i'll go over select this color then I'll go to the lighter region of this color so you can use my color code if it makes it any easier right good so I've copied this go over to um, the brush using the brush for this and my flow is set to 100 I'll just change the blend mode to linear dodge add make sure your caps lock is not on so you can see the brush size well so I'm just gonna click and once like this then too much control z reduce the size of the brush and i'm just gonna click again right good so you can th intensify it by clicking the second time right so i click twice so for this one double click on the thumbnail i still want to make you see what i said i will still adjust this later on now it's too much so I'll just increase it a bit and um, voila there you go click OK okay so the next thing next thing create a layer on top of every other thing select this color right and make sure it's a darker color use my code if you're not sure of the color you want to use right go to your brush tool and um, reduce the flow to 50, um, 53 anywhere around 50 is fine so I'm just going to apply this here and make sure you're not doing too much I think this is good so you can choose to control it by going over to the opacity and reducing it right so that's one very good thing about Photoshop so going over to my resource file, I'm going to drag this next element that I'm going to be using in, bring it in, bring it on. So while it's in like this, a few things, I make it bigger, just like this. Position it well. Yeah. Okay, so I want to zoom close to something. So there are too many imperfections with his hands like this um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of composition to it so I click on exposure right click and um, select create clipping mask so it affects just the hand alone so I'm going to make a couple of changes with exposure first so you can copy my settings and let me bring this up well so what you want to do is press ctrl i on the mask to invert it Go over to your brush to invert the color since your mask is black you should be working on a white color and uh, make sure your flow is set to 60 and uh, gently apply that exposure to the areas you don't want light to meet right 
so it's another thing again that when you are compositing um when you're doing manipulation you have and using lights you have idea of where the source light is coming from that's very important in designing it makes you good at what you do so um go to this layer right we're going to be adding something else to it so instead of being up here i'm just going to come here and select this and i'm going to select curves you can see that automatically it has clipped it to the image so i'm just going to throw in um, a little bit of contrast with curves like this um apply on that one here mm. this is making it look dramatic and i don't want to go to dramatic so i'm just going to turn down the opacity like this while the effects are still visible and um before and after right but i don't want it everywhere in design so what do i do yes you guessed right so i'm going to go over to but just before then i would like to create something else so go to exposure again and turn down the exposure this time i'm going to go hard on exposure right so invert this and i'm just going to go over to my brush and i'm going to conceal all these areas i'm going to be hard on these regions because then of course lights would not get here right so by default i'm just going to make all this hidden kind of okay so I'm going to select everything as regards the hand and I'm going to group them so I'm just going to name this hand I'm going to drag this inside here like this great so um make this smaller this way And when you're on that position you want, click enter. So I'm just going to move this to the position where I want it to be. No, this is far off. Nope. Um, okay, this is not going to work. So I'm going to put this back like this. And um, select the love. I'm going to place it here. okay so now that that's out of the way go back go to your pen tool and make sure you change it create new layer first go to your pen tool make sure you remove this from part and set to shape just like this and um change the color i'm going to use this darker color here right or uh, this is how to change the color just click on this you can use your eyedropper tool to select the color just like i've done here and when you are done click on layer itself probably click out so I'm just going to draw this using my pen tool I'm just going to trace 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 like this okay so I haven't done that the next thing I'm going to do is click on the mask with the mask selected I'm just going to go, I'm going to conceal these areas. So go over to your brush and I'm just going to paint mistake. Make sure you're on the black. So I'm just going to conceal this part here like this. And when I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is click on the layer itself, go to filter, go to blur and Gaussian blur. Convert to smart object, please. And voila so it's too much i'm going to leave it like this and click ok just like this 
so I'm going to duplicate this um, so I have more intensity but with this one I am just going to control T and I'm just going to turn this on its own here like this and I'm going to move it backwards a bit just like this and click enter perfect nicely done so um, correcting the imperfection go over to your exposure make sure you're on directly on the love and um, right click create clipping mask then of course reduce the exposure and increase the gamma correction like this um, use my settings please for this so invert this go over to the brush and I'm only going to paint that revert this to the areas that I will be needing it especially the base here that I know that lights would not touch that much you can see how these little things are very effective in your compositions in your flyers generally if you want to be a good um, photo manipulator you need to have ideas for all these things create another exposure again and at this time I'm just going to go down all the way and um, also all the way like this do the same thing clip it so it affects only this invert Ctrl I to invert this and um, what you want to do is invert this yes good so with your brush selected I'm just going to paint only on the areas that I know will be extremely dark because light wouldn't get to it if you feel it's too much go over to your opacity and um, you can control it yourself see how easy that is great I'm going to add some more here to make it more realistic and there you go so what I'm going to do next is select everything and I'm going to group them and I'm just going to name this love like this right and there you go i'm going over i'm just going to select um select a rectangle from this part here rectangle two and um i'm just going to draw this like this and first things first i'm just going to reduce make it rounded corners first then change the color to use something like this you can see how easy that was right easy peasy so next thing i want to do is let's see okay create a new layer right click and click clipping mask go over to your brush tool turn off the cap locks select a color i will be using this color and increase the brush size I'm using my bracket key to do that so just paint on it easy right you can see how nice that is see the effect that this is creating for us good exactly now ctrl z okay so for the rectangle what i would do is just drag and drop take it up like this so it's above everything but this time this one wouldn't have feel and i'm going to give it a stroke with this color of course increase the size of the stroke like this make sure it's not too much So when you've gotten your your desired point you can then press ok like this 
but for me i'm gonna use this this way great okay so then of course the next thing to do is go over to your text before you do that please don't forget to create a new layer right so go over to your text and i'm going to type this first and foremost we use the size so if you observe i'm not typing anywhere close to the rectangle yet i'm just going to type outside and bring it inside i just did that on purpose So the word is anywhere you go okay great so i'm just gonna leave this here push it up to the middle and voila there you go increase the size Okay, so for the hand, I feel it's a little bit too dark. So I'll just go over to the first exposure I did. And um, yeah, I'm on the hand or this exposure, and I'm going to bring it up slightly. You can see how much difference that has made. So that's why it's good to actually group things and make it orderly. So when you want to make adjustments, you know exactly where to go to. okay so i'm going to go to the topmost layer i'm going to make um, a snapshot of everything i have done before i do that i'm going to go over to color balance now this is where things start to lit up a bit so now like the word implies color balance i want to balance this whole image so the first thing i want to do is i'm working with midtones first you can see how slightly with just a nudge of that arrow you can see how important changes are being made right so i'm just going to leave this here like this go to shadow of course i like adding blues to my shadows but on this occasion if i add blue this is what happens so i'm not going to put too much of a blue but i'm definitely going towards the red position but not too much and i'm going to use let me just type this this is beginning to stress me so plus one for this every other thing stays the same so for highlights i'm going to go towards the red and you can see how much different that makes right click ok so let's try that this is before and this is after Voila, you can see how much different that makes. Right? So even some better, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to stay on this layer. Press Ctrl Shift Alt and E to make a snapshot. This is the snapshot. Right click and select convert to smart object. Then I can turn this on successfully. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go over to noise, add noise. First things first. Please use my settings for this. You don't want too much noise on this. When you're done, click OK. So you can see how much difference that makes, right? Uh huh. So let's go. So go to Camera Raw Filter. So what I'm going to do with this is just the basic to make the entire image pop. Like the first thing you need to do is. Go over to texture. I'm going to bump up my texture all the way out. Going over to clarity, making sure that's not too much. And um, where you have sharpening, take this up. I'm going to add some sharpening to it, not too much, lest you make a mess of everything. So, as you can see, voila it has been added to it okay great so guys this is 
before color balance and everything this is after so guys this brings me to the end of this video section if you've liked this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please if you've not subscribed to my channel now is actually the best time to do that i will see you in the next video be good